our healthcare system is not built to be fair, honestly, um, for all of the people who come its way. It's a really big problem, and it's one that we have known about for a really long time, even before COVID, but now COVID-19 has sort of exposed the, the fault lines in America, as we say, and um, now that we have the sort of uh, social injustices that are going on as well, and we're calling that a pandemic within a pandemic, um, it's really a pandemic within a pandemic within a pandemic. We can no longer afford to be silent regarding matters of oppression. Racial discrimination and implicit bias negatively impact the quality of health care provided to people of color, especially Black people. Um, we, as Black people, as colored people, are disproportionately affected by gun violence, by police brutality, by all of these things. And it's disheartening, to say the least, to go to work every day and know that you're going to see you know, black male after black male after black male um, dying from penetrating trauma. And then in the room next door, you have someone who has um, very high blood pressure that's threatening a stroke or a heart attack or a problem with their kidney. There's evidence that shows that clinician bias or unconscious automatic implicit biases is one contributor to healthcare inequality and that the patient's identity, race, gender, sexual orientation, even their weight um, the environment that they come from, the level of education that they have, or their behaviors, such as IV drug users, um, can affect the way that the clinician behaves when they're talking to the patient. This is kind of baked into the way that we practice medicine. You know, Black patients' pain was more often dismissed, and they were more often viewed as, as a, you know, pain-seeking behavior, and so they weren't giving opioid pain medications. Whereas for white patients, they were more frequently given these pain medicines. Because often what happens is that Black and brown patients get blamed for their, for their outcomes not being as good as white folks. So these racial inequities are actually about the social conditions and the policies, not about the behavior or compliance with medications or biology or genes or DNA of Black and Latinx patients. You know, some of this is, you know, people are choosing to ignore it. Some of it, people are just taking cognitive shortcuts based on bias and stereotyping. And it's a lot of times stuff they're not even aware of. What we know is that in healthcare, like in, uh, like in policing, people take quick cognitive shortcuts when they have to make uh, significant decisions in a short amount of time. And if that cognitive shortcut is built on top of, you know, uh, notions of inferiority or, or threat or other notions of bias, then it's going to lead to more biased outcomes. And so we will continue to have health disparities until we start addressing racism, because racism is a strong social predictor or health or social determinant of health. Us as physicians, we are a reflection of society. And if there's racism that exists in society um, and in the structures that our society has built for over 400 years, um, then there is also racism in, in health and in hospitals. And there's implicit and explicit bias in providers as well. So all of those things translate into healthcare. When our society doesn't value Black lives and lives of Latinx people and Indigenous people and people who, for whom English is not their first language, that lack of valuing the lives of those folks, people of color, is bleeds into what happens in clinics and hospitals. And our broader society sends messages every minute of every day about whose lives matter and whose don't, who should be listened to and respected and who shouldn't, who has power, who has agency, all of those things are a part of how a doctor might interpret a symptom that a patient gives. Uh, physicians are, are, are deeply interested in the well-being of patients and they want to figure out how they can how they can be a part of making this better. So it's about offering things like discretion mediation or implicit bias training, tools that are going to help move us in the right direction. Because I think as a profession, the hearts are in the right place. As Leanne mentioned, we took that oath because we want to do well by our patients. And now it's just making sure that we're designing a system that helps make that actually happen.